Hello, hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Danielle. I make videos about mental health, spirituality, or whatever I want. Today we're gonna do a pick a card reading. This is going to be what you need to hear right now. So let's dive in. First and foremost, if you're called to more than one pile, there's probably a message for you in more than one pile. Therefore, listen to them all if you want. Doesn't matter. So here's the pile. One. Pile one. Pile two. And pile three. So which one, which one do you feel most called to? Pile one, pile two, or pile three? Take a deep breath in for six, hold it for three, exhale for four, ask to connect to your higher self, mother, father, God, Holy Spirit, guardian angels, ancestors and guides, all those who work with you for your highest and greatest good to bring you to the pile that has the messages that you need to know right now. So pause this and pick one, two, or three. Thumbnail vibes. Okay, cool. This is in depth, in depth, in depth. We're gonna start with pile number one. So, I chose pile number one, and this is your reading, all about what it is that you need to know right now. First off the bat, we have travel. Journey, path, and location. I feel like you guys are restless right now, restless to explore, restless to go out and connect with people. We have obsidian, grounding, shielding, and void. This is giving me actually like Kundalini awakening vibes where this, this desire to connect with people has kind of grown, grown in from like the void within you. And we have autumn, abundance, preparation, and harvest. Let's see here. Mother, Father, God, Holy Spirit, guiding you, those ancestors and guides who work with pile number one for their highest and greatest good. You please help me to explain the messages that you want to bring forward for their highest and greatest good. Thank you, Christ Consciousness, for delivering the message. I'll show you the cards first. We have the Merlin, guidance, mentorship, teacher of old ways. Number 33, master number. Carry me home, support, time to be carried, allow others to help. 27 which is the degree of this Cancer Full Moon that is actually happening, or it happened yesterday. Number nine, we have the Watcher, the Snow Leopard, 15. So number six, this is your higher self coming in strong. There's a lot of guidance. You guys need to know that you're very guided in everything that you do. I think you might know this though. We have sextile, a combination of tension and flow, potential and a rewarding situation. It's giving me the energy of six. Three plus three is six. You guys are definitely harmonizing. Mercury, think, learn, network, and communicate. Three, 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 when I show this, and Mercury is rules Gemini, which is in the third house. I feel like you guys are doing a lot of things in threes, new things in threes. Yeah, literally, time machine, number three. Smoke and mirrors, number six, 42. Seeing beyond, beyond, 36, number nine. Which could also be like 369 vibes. The land between, number 44. With a storyteller. Number eight, it was 17, 4, 17 on the clock when I put that card up. Like a lot of things are aligning for you. Let's just see what's happening here for you guys. I feel like your restlessness is exactly what was needed to show you where you would want to explore. We have the heart, right? Even there, it's giving me Six of Swords vibes, paddling on with the shadow. Oh, 
Six of Swords. The Four of Wands. The Six of Cups. And the Prince of Discs, which is the Knight of Cup or Knight of Pentacles. So let's see what's going on here. What's going on? What does my pile number one need to know? It's all falling together. So you guys are learning a lot to do with that perhaps you wanted to go into a leadership role, but you're understanding with Merlin that there's a lot that you needed to lead and understand within yourself first and foremost, and you can't bypass that. Has to do a lot with your mental health, with Mercury coming up here, and smoke and mirrors and seeing beyond with the third eye and storyteller. This is a lot to do about what I tell myself, about what I see, a lot to do about perception. Even the watcher, like his, their piercing eyes, your piercing eyes. You guys have been doing a lot of work to really re examine, like literally the shadow and the heart here. You have been doing a lot of shadow work probably whether this is consciously or unconsciously you don't actually have to you know be sitting down and asking yourselves million and one questions to figure shit out it happens quite seamlessly actually sometimes carry me home you guys are learning to like let other people support you as well you need to know that it's okay to let people support you that you don't need to do everything by yourself that you are exactly where you need to be. The land in between, I know you feel restless. I get restless energy from you guys. Like you just wanna go, you just wanna reap the benefits right away because you've been doing this for so long, it feels like with the Prince of Discs, like you've been, you've been at this for quite some time. I feel like with the Six of Swords and the Four of Wands, you might have had to leave something that felt like a happily ever after, something that felt like like you left a relationship is kind of what it feels like. You left a person, you left a situation, you left an environment that was just chaotic because you saw the truth, smoke and mirrors, you saw the truth. And what lies between you actually, you know, being in this new, being in this new world that you can sense in between is what you say. Is what you're speaking into existence. See this? What lies on the other side of your third eye of visions materializing is the guise that you allow yourself to, you know, it's a disguise. I'm hearing freshen up, <laughs> freshen up. That's probably what this grounding, shielding, and void is. What you need to know is like, it's important to have a, a limit, have a boundary. And that the work that you have been doing to master yourself has been in preparation for your harvest. You just really need to know that, you know, the work that you've been doing is actually integrating. All of the, especially to do with the past here, the hope, something that it was taking you forever to get over, to get past, it is being relinquished. It's being relinquished. I wish I had one more deck that I didn't want. Darn it. It's being relinquished. Let's look at the Six of Swords here together with this deck. Success after defeat, protection, a new journey, and paths becoming clearer. Yeah, a celebration. Whatever it is that you struggled, you know, there's some wounds happening here that are being tended to. Whatever it was that you, like you fought to get out of this and you successfully chose the right path. In the journey, the seeker finds new resources through exercising patience. That's exactly what this Prince of Discs is. It's patience. Understanding that things become uncovered when they need to be and not a moment sooner. I definitely feel like also with the obsidian and autumn here that 
in order for you to really reap your rewards, you are being asked to ground because when you ground, you actually become that tree that everything is going to grow from. You're really on a journey of taking accountability for yourself and bringing home aspects of yourself, understanding how you move so that you can reposition yourself. Literally, time machine is inherited patterns, conditioning, lessons already learned, cellular memory, and honoring the past without being trapped there. That's what this feels like. It's looking back and honoring the past. You have been waiting so long to reconvene with your inner child, and this is what has happened here. I'm so proud of you guys. You need to know that you're doing a good job. Like, I feel like that's literally the message for you guys, pile number one, is you're doing a good job. So take the time to celebrate yourself and see how far you've come. I love you. <laughs> so be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and stick around because there's plenty where, where this came from. Bye. We're moving on to pile number two. Let me just clear the table. Okay. Clear the energy of pile number one for me, please. If you chose pile number two, then this is your reading. Let's get into it. So we have the High Council, Evolution, Information, and Potential. Sun, Illumination, Growth, and God Energy. Astral Travel, Vital, vital Information, Vital Force, Information, and Dreamtime Soul Travel. So you guys are at the conference is what I'm feeling. You are, you have leveled up in the spiritual realm. You have definitely leveled up in the spiritual realm. Like, 100 P. Like, not, not a doubt. No doubt. So we have second doorway. Working with intuition, second sight opening, and dimensional doorways. You are working, literally, to change Songline's Orca, to change your bloodline. You were given the mission to do differently. Snake, to create for yourself. You've been initiated into this new creation. You've, you've definitely spotted within your life what it is that you don't vibe with within your environment. And we're initiated into bringing this higher learning that you see, literally a higher view here, in from the ether so that you could bring it forward. We have the moon. Satisfy emotional needs, nurture self and other. Air. Open-mindedness, objectivity and learning. Cardinal, instigation, bravery, and a pioneering spirit. Sagittarius, optimism, exploration, and freedom. 1313. And Aquarius, originality, philanthropy, and progressive imaginings. Literally just seeing a bird fly up high. But yeah, higher, higher learning. I'll show you the cards first and then we'll get into more of the messages. Quieting the mind. Shining through. We have the riddle. The vessel. The hunter. We have the five of lances. The eight of cups. The chariot. The Four of Swords, the Knight of Cups, and the Ten of Coins. Oh, one more. And the Six of Wands. So, all of this, what this is telling to me is that, first of all, with the Success card, you're doing a great job, okay? You are being received in a new light. Like I said, what you need to know is that it was actually your task to bring in this newfound intuitive abilities into your bloodline, into your environment, and to create from this heart expansive place. Because your intuition, you know, communicates through your high heart chakra. This is why you were kind of stuffed into environments that you did not like, because the divine knew 
the High Council knew that you were the one who had the potential to illuminate and to bring forward what you find out. What you find out through your intuition, through the messages in your dreams, and through the card on the floor, it's fine. The secret doorway. You have the ability to open these doorways because when you find yourself in environments that you don't feel the best, this is, you know, being a part of your family, but being very different, having a different mission. The moon can also talk about, you know, past lives and where you've been and what hits deep for you, right? Air and cardinal, it's that you were supposed to, this information, air is information, right? Cardinal is the beginning, it's the starter. You are meant to start. You are the one who opens the door and by you walking through this door, you are allowing others to come through as well. Sagittarius and Aquarius, it's like this higher learning that you understand, this expansive way of seeing the world, this higher viewpoint that you have the ability to tap into, you bring this to your collective. You bring this healing to the collective. And if you are struggling to get it, to understand this, right? With the riddle, it, it talks about the more you try to understand something, the less you will because you're, you're suffocating it. It's not so much about how, but just about it is, <laughs> you know? So quiet your mind so that you can allow this to come through. That's truly the only thing you need to do. You're also learning with the vessel and hunter to love yourself and to be grounded in your human body more so than ever. And to work with your Mars, Martian energy, your Mars, your, your drive, your force, and to understand, because you are a force to be reckoned with here. Like you are powerful. And you're understanding that. And the hunter just reminds you to be very aware of what it is that you are going after and why because you will be successful, especially with this here. The same kind of energy with the chariot, like you are moving forward, no, no it's ands about it, like you're going forward. But again, we have a card reminding you to quiet your mind. And the Knight of Cups and the Ten of Coins here, it's, you understood that this is truly about introspection, being within yourself, you know, the moon, the song lines, this is all about within creation, your heart is in you, it's not outside of you. You're understanding that you are your destiny. You might be like, oh, I really want, you know, a lover or this, or that, that, and the other, but you want to, you need to be whole because your wholeness is what brings you this destiny. And the Eight of Cups with the Five of Lances, let me just look at what this hunter is about. The seeker, the pursuer, the predator. So focused, energized, respectful, and seasoned when dark, irresponsible, violates, violent, and poaching. Yeah, it's really like you... Okay, the question that says, what am I hunting? Why am I hunting it? Is the weapon I hold so tightly in my grip truly needed for the task at hand? You know, it's, it's when you're being a hunter, you can't just shoot everywhere. You have to be very precise. So you're learning to understand this energy within you, this, this self that is very much God energy, you know, Christ consciousness within you, the power that you have and hold. And you're like, I literally see you in front of me, you're being like, behold, beholding yourself. You are witnessing yourself so deeply now. But with that comes great responsibility. You can't just shoot that arrow anywhere. Right? So let's see what the Five of Lances and Eight of Cups is about. Because the Eight of Cups talks about walking away, walking away from something. Okay, so relaxation after a long period of striving is at the heart of this card and makes its presence welcome in any reading. The society of good friends or like-minded people is also present in the meetings, as is the idea of a pact made between those who seek similar goals. Strength restored, prosperity, and the reunion of old friends suggest a place of calmness and contemplation where new avenues of thought or action can be explored. The seeker journeys on with newfound hope, taking time out, celebration, completion, fruits of labor, and inner strength. It's a pause. Yeah. You need to know that you've been doing, you, you have a, 
a big mission. So it is very important for you to temper yourself, to allow yourself to have these paused, these paused moments. Am I good? This even reminds me of Cancer, right? The, the zodiac, this energy of black and white duality of that balance is how you are going to be able to go forward successfully. Even here, like he's not running, he's pausing, he's taking his time. So take your time because you are leading towards success. You are successful and you have a big, you have a big mission, <laughs> truly, to bring in what you sense from your intuition and create that, but only when you can actually allow your mind to quiet, to prioritize meditation, can you allow what is true for you to shine through. Let's see what it says for, for shining through. Self-expression without filters or masks, authentic communication, being proud of who you are, shining in the world and refusing to make yourself small just to belong. Yeah, you're needing to quiet your mind so that you can understand what it is within you that is your, your thought processes or what it is that society or people around you have, you know, forced you to think. So yeah, I love you. This is the end of this reading. <laughs> Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and stick around because there's plenty more where this comes from, came from. If you have any suggestions you want for pick a card reading topics, drop it in the comment section down below. And I'm moving on to pile number three. Love you. Okay, if you chose pile number three, this is your reading. Let me just get a sip. Okay. Clear it out. Let's get into it, pile number three. Unicorn, trust, innocence, and honesty. A whole new world. Wow, your inner child is revived. I feel like you are tapped into the magic of, you guys are witchy as fuck, or like wizardy as fuck. You guys are powerful. You have stairs, direction, and timing. Divine timing is at play here. And nettle, boundaries and caution. So let's look, let's look. <gasps> Another, the unicorn and the maiden. Communication with unicorn, purification and undercover action, bitch. What? Who are y'all? Who are y'all? You guys can communicate with species of intergalactic resonance, different dimensions. Powerful. We have kindness, fruit bat and flying fox. Power, dear. Okay, this is 1111 portals here. Look at this, though, how there's portals. Two portals here. Two portals, two unicorns. I wonder what this caution is about, the boundary, the caution. Not to move too forcefully. We have Leo, self-confidence, loyalty, and creativity. Trine, angelic support, harmony, and perfect flow. Uh, you guys may have been thinking that you were alone, and that is literally quite the opposite. You guys are so surrounded. Literally, we have fruit bats, we have bats, we have deer, we have unicorns, we have angels. Look, another angel wing here. This is house six, establishing a foundation, health, daily life, and practical details. So Virgo. So interesting, okay. So let's look at how this came out. We have Leo basically trining the sixth house. So your self-expression, your confidence, whatever Leo rules in your chart is trining right now. Might not actually be, but like this is just the energy that's coming out for you guys. Cause Leo and Virgo is gonna be different for everybody where it is in your chart. But Leo rules the 11th house of friends and networking. Um, Networking can also be the third house, but for this energy, it's it's the 11th house of... Um, no, it's not the 11th house. What am I saying? Leo rules, sorry, the fifth house, actually. It rules the fifth house of... I don't know why I said 11th house. Interesting. Maybe you guys are thinking right now. You are thinking about wanting to make new friends, honestly. Wanting to make new friends and go new places. And you're struggling a little bit. You feel, you probably feel a little bit alone and lonely because, oh, this is 10, 12, 11, interesting. You feel like everything's out of whack, but it's actually in the, the, the timing that it needs to be. It's in the way that it needs to be. I feel like you guys should read up about unicorns. Check them out. <laughs> 
they might have messages for you. But um, yeah, so Leo, so fifth house and sixth house. So you guys are learning how to make your work fun. Um, allow your inner child to be free, you know, and expressive in your work and your daily routine. You're trying to figure out a way to, and that's what's supported right now because trying is like really good energy. You're, you're learning how to make your work fun. You're learning how to be more dedicated, honestly, because you know that having fun is going to help you with that dedication. But we also have the house six squaring, which is a challenging situation and a mountain to climb. That house nine of spiritual growth. So you're learning to balance, you're, you're struggling a little bit to balance the physical um, and the spiritual. You're, you're still learning how to balance it. I feel like you've been working on it. You need to be kinder to yourself and actually acknowledge how powerful you are as well, that you're doing really, really, really good. You have a tall tail here. 35. Wish upon a star. This is a wish of yours being granted. A powerful move. So this is giving me the wish upon a star may have to do with your career, just because this is like the world card to me in my mind right now. We have the seed and the flame. Whatever you have been planted, whatever, I just said you've been implanted. Whatever you planted, is actually it's growing it is it is very much so growing right now you need to know that it's working whatever it is that comes to mind right now it's working Let's see what else we have here we have the six of lances the five of stones Page of Wands. So this again, this has to do with this is Leo energy of passion, you know, sexuality, creative energy. Then we have the Eight of Swords. So this must be the tall tale. There's something, you are putting yourself in boxes. You are focusing on the negative way too much here. Way too much. You're being way too hard on yourself. We have the Nine of Cups and the Wheel of Fortune. Doesn't matter though. It, will, it only matters because you're just, you're making the present moment harder for yourself. Regardless of your fears and insecurities or whatever's being brought up inside of you. Excuse me. Yeah, exactly confirmation verb your manifestations are coming because they're faded they're literally faded the wheel of fortune is faded we have the death card this is new beginnings new financial beginnings six of pentacles coins new financial fin financial beginnings oh my god can i speak complete transformation of your finances perspective so hanged man and the six of swords yeah, the, you realize that the only way forward... Okay, you need to know that the only way forward here is for you to change your, change your perspective. The tall tale, whatever it is that this tall tale is that you have, you're speaking onto yourself, is what needs to be shifted here. Let's see what it is. Because the Six of Lances talks about victory, advancement, steady progress, acknowledgement, and being honored. This is new revelations, news coming in towards you. That has to do probably with a creative pursuit that you were fucking worried sick about, but that is destined to be one of your creations. Let's see what the six or the five of stones is here. Oh yeah, it's insecurity, feeling overwhelmed, loneliness and strain of success. Though this card can represent loss of material things, failure, and impoverishment, there is also a deeper sense of a friend or helper whose influence, though not always understood, can clear the path towards a better understanding of the role fate has in store for us. It can also stand for a dangerous passion, the kind that overwhelms us and leaves us emotionally desti destitute or strips us of our dignity. On the journey, it implies a need to be aware of human failings. So this, you know, just brings me to 
taking on too much, taking on more than you bargained for, and for what? When there's literally a friend here who will help you, meaning I feel like this is, you're literally so supported in the physical world and the astral world, like so supported. You just need to trust, trust divine timing. And what is it that you need to have boundaries with? Like this is very interesting for me. Hmm. Page of Wands and the Eight of Swords, like, what are, you, what are you worried about? Yeah, this is something you're doing that makes you feel anxious, like, makes you feel, yeah, needing to understand why you're doing something. Maybe it's learning how to be more detached, honestly. This, because, what? It's like, you're, hold on, I, I just, things are really good, and you are stuck on seeing them. You're judging yourself too much. You need to give yourself more kindness. Because this says, this card tells us that great efforts be it bring rewards, though they are not always easily won or immediately recognized. Thus, tough expecta though expectations we may have held for a long time can be fulfilled, there is a price to pay and we should regard warily the riches we are offered. Also present in the meaning is a need to judge between the importance of pressing forward and leaning too much on the past. A messenger may come with good news and the seeker experiences new revelations. Victory, advancement, steady progression, acknowledgement and being honored. So maybe it's like searching, seeking a certain outcome, but not understanding that we might be doing that because we're afraid. You know what I mean? Um, let's just see here. Because it is, uh, you're needing to surrender to move forward, literally, that's what it is. Like, you need to just surrender. Even the path that's flipped upside down there, like, that kindness is actually an act of surrendering. Letting yourself trust the powerful being that you are. Can you tell me, please, um, Mother, Father, God, Holy Spirit, Guardian Angels, Ancestors, and Guides who work with Pal number three for their highest and greatest good, what this nettle, boundaries, and caution is about, please? What is this metal boundaries and caution about? Whoa. It's actually about temperance. What did I say about needing to temper yourself? I think I said that, didn't I? Love, ace of cups, and ace of swords. These are two gifts. These are two gifts that the universe has given you. What is going on? What is this boundaries about? What is this boundaries about? Okay, it's taking on too much. Don't take on too much. You will only disappoint yourself with un with with un. I'm saying with unregulated. Literally, nine of cups coming in reverse. It's going to feel like a disappointment. It's going to feel like. You, are, you feel like you're being way too hard on yourself. Literally is what the caution is about. Exactly. The nine of swords coming out and the five of wands. You're judging yourself. You're comparing yourself to others. You are overthinking. Goosebumps everywhere. You're overthinking your manifestations. You're worrying too much about the how. You're worrying too much about the details. Your ego, your ego, a tall tale, your ego. You may be saying things that don't need to be said. I'm just gonna be frank with you guys. You might be saying things that don't need to be said where you might be dealing with a little bit of pride because you might actually know how powerful you are. A tall tale, what's going on here? What's the tall tale about? For group number three. Okay, so it is to do... Hold on. 35. 
Denial, concealing the truth so you can manipulate or control a situation, fear-based communication, creating a narrative to hide behind, not allowing the fear of what others will, will think to influence your words. Learners can communicate from a place of authenticity. Okay. So this is, feels like creating a narrative to hide behind. With the two of discs, you may be making out reasons why you're not doing the things that you need to be doing to take care of yourself. Queen of Cups, Ten of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles. Yeah. You're making up excuses for why you're not prioritizing your time properly. For why you're not being as soft with yourself as you deserve. Yeah, the Empress. Your creations. Stop. Stop. Like, stop making up stories. I've been getting this message so clearly for like all three. Like, no more making stories. Don't make stories about the what you feel. We're not operating from the mind anymore. It's a heart space living. There's a reason why spiritual growth has a heart there. But also, Leo. You guys might have a Leo person in your in your midst. Um, maybe strong Leo placements. Sun, moon, rising. Who actually is a mirror to you that triggers you. That you need to caution yourself with the gifts. It's like don't fumble the bag action. Okay, when you get clarity and you have the love, don't fumble the fucking bag. Treat that shit like it is worthy because it is. Because we had, you know... The temperance, which again, another indication that you guys are so divinely supported and guided. But the Ace of Cups and the Ace of Swords, when you get that clarity, when you get that idea, when you get that, don't expect everybody else around you. Like it's you, it's you that is powerful and it's you that needs to stay aware of the dimensions, the gateways that are opening for you because it's your choices that make the difference here. So let's look at the seed here, 197. The beginning, the origin, and the pearl. So when light, it's generative, fertile, germinating, building. When dark, festering, stewing, and dormant. Hmm. Beginnings come in many forms. They are not always a beautiful seed placed intentionally in nourishing soil. Origin stories, like any birth story, are complex, surprising, multi-layered, and usually reveal a central image or detail that represents the fully formed being. Simply stated, the end is present in the beginning, or the entire oak tree resides within the acorn. Whether you follow this imaginary, imaginal theory or not, know that when this card appears, there is potent regenerative energy all around. It stirs your very insides and usually results in an antsy, impatient feeling. Pay particular attention to what agitates you, as it is a sure sign of growth to come. You are bumping up against a growth edge. It is from the grit that the pearl eventually comes to be. So whatever is irritating you guys, whatever you feel like there's a blockage to your communication, pay attention to that. Because that's exactly where you need to go in order to open that door. Literally. With the flame here, 167. Seven energy, probably really prominent for you guys. The fire, the spark, the glimmer. Health, mental clarity, good digestion. When dark, excessive heat and anger, complete darkness. In Sanskrit, the word for fire is Agni. The ancient yogis saw this flame at the center of the abdomen and believed it to be responsible for our vitality. When it is lit, we are connected to our purpose and sense that life is a sacred gift. It is said that those who cannot see the sacred around them have let their inner flame go out. Think of this card as a call to reignite that fire, to cup your hands gently around those things you've forgotten to protect and to protect the flame, no matter how harshly the winds around you blow. It could be an inner archetype that begs you to light its wick. It is likely that the poet, the mystic, and the shaman would call to you with the language of the flame. Yeah, poet, the mystic, and the shaman. Yeah, you guys are powerful as fuck. Well. And this is also what it, there's a new beginning in, is your, your passion. Which is why you were asked to purge these fears around surrounding your passions and to understand that you cannot be wishing to collect on, you know, death. There was a death maybe to your finances, like completely just disappeared or very unregulated, very 
unstable that is now going to stabilize because you understand what it is that you are seeking and searching and you understand that you you are safe to to do what you wish to do you are literally there's so much happening behind the scenes that you have no idea that you have no idea you guys are magical even the energy of 10, you know, this is karmic completions here for you guys. The goddess Athena here. Wish upon a star, powerful move. What? Something, like, what is going on here? There's so much, I feel like there's so much, um... Yeah, I feel like this is literally, you guys are going to be revealed your purpose. One of your purposes. You're going to understand, you're going to have so much clarity. And a tall tale is just stop feeding into the bullshit that's around you, please. <laughs> Don't perpetuate that. Be very aware of what it is that you speak to yourself and what it is that you actually invest in because that's what you're fostering, truly, okay? I love you so much. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and stick around because there's plenty more where this came from. And I love you, Pile 3. So have a wonderful day. Bye. I love you.